Hey, this is Full Game Prometheus giving you another live gameplay. Once again, I'll be using uh, the Tennessee Titans as uh, my primary formation on offense. It actually jumped into a different playbook. I jumped into the Detroit Lions uh, Matt Patricia playbook just because it's got a 43 and some 34 defenses. And you'll be watching during this game. I'll be jumping around in different type of defenses against my opponent. So I come out of single back trips. I uh, just try to establish the run. Uh, I was setting up my audibles really quick just so I can jump into this uh, in end of game situations. Nice little run right up there. He gets a, a nice block shed uh, by his linebacker to go ahead and, and tackle him for a two-yard gain. He probably could have been a little bit more unless he got a play right there. So right here going stick and nod, I drag up my backside receiver, and actually uh, hit my guy right there and get myself uh, a few yards. Uh, on that particular play. So 33 situation. Once again, still working um, this uh, shotgun um, uh, wing uh, formation. And uh, right here, he actually follows my crossing linebacker, leaving the running back on the, that block and release wide open for a huge gainer right down the middle. So uh, two, uh, two com straight completions right now on this first drive. Feeling, feeling pretty good about this. Uh, jump into... Um, Basically, I'm still staying in, uh, actually go into the, the single back formation and just uh, hit him up with a uh, straight uh, halfback dive right here. Um, and I missed the hole right there. I actually took it a little bit wide, and as you can see, I didn't pick up any yards on that. So second and nine situation, uh, went ahead and did the double posts right here. I've got a drag underneath, and then I've got the high route. It comes down and bites on the drag, and I, I actually see on the back side there's no pass, there's no no uh, deep pass protection, and uh, Gabriel's able to go ahead and get the ball down. So I know huddled down there, just try to go and just knock the ball into the end zone because uh, as of recently, my, my offense has been pretty flat. And I really haven't been scoring a lot as the most recent game. I actually scored three to nothing on a game, but right here. So to go into the single backs formation right here with the pitch play, get the ball into the red zone and able to get a touchdown. So giving the ball back to my opponent right here. Um, I, I was actually trying to set up my defenses, had to settle for a cover three right here. So everything's pretty lock, locked up. I've got a man, and look at this. His his wide receiver comes back to the ball right there and gets a nice little completion right down the field. So I think he no huddled me once again. So I'm right here. I jump into. Uh, the uh, cover uh, uh, cover four show two uh, drop formation really good against the run hard defense to stop um, right here I think I hit him with the the overload G formation I've been experimenting with this formation I haven't jumped in in, the, in this formation at all on defense uh, just because I'm trying to think change things up right here but he actually makes a phenomenal read the blitz actually gets picked up on the edge leaving the edge um, completely unprotected so right here I go back to an old formation uh, on defense that I've been using a lot he, this guy's played a lot of crossing routes, and right here he takes off with this quarterback. So you're going to see him getting a lot of big plays out of out of uh, uh, Aaron Rodgers with his feet. So uh, go into the uh, into that safety blitz right here, and the pressure comes in and actually sacks him. And I think he no huddles. Yeah, this guy was uh, when he got frustrated with no huddle. So I go into a kind of a complete zone type coverage. I've actually I put both of my guys into spies to try to protect against that run, and he actually just running out outright slants. And he picks up a good first down. So just uh, he just shredded my defense, and, and um, I, I didn't want him to take off. So at this time, I actually go ahead and just put one spy on the field. And uh, right here, uh, you can see he actually takes a pass right there, almost gets the ball in the end zone, uh, but a second and 10, he overthrows the ball. So now I'm actually I set the defense up a little bit better. I've got uh, the pressure off the edge. Let's see if he protects it. He runs the ball, and right there, my linebacker comes in and smacks, uh, basically tackles his running back in the backfield. So third and 13 situation, no huddles. I go ahead and try to protect the corner right there. He throws it right towards my user. My guy didn't scrape, and I basically did not get an interception right there. So he actually threw it right at me. That was an opportunity for me to get a touchdown right there. So once again, he actually takes off. He actually almost caught the ball right in the, in the end zone. So first and 10, second, second and goal right here. He actually almost completes the ball right there. Uh, he went into a heavy set and actually passed the ball. So right here, I'm, I'm concerned that uh, I'm trying to just put zones all over the field, and this is just a bad defensive setup. It was a terrible setup, and I couldn't make a, I couldn't make any kind of uh, adjustments right here uh, because all my defenders are actually in the middle of the field. I've got a couple flat zones out there and soft squats, and I got my guys spied up. So he just waits, he waits, he waits, he waits, and off to the right here, his, his, his receiver comes down, he comes right back to the ball, puts the ball in the end zone. So very, very good patience with this guy on offense. He didn't freak out, he didn't flip out. Uh, he would wait for the plays to actually, for his, for his players to make, make, make right corrections. So right here I go ahead, he catch him a little bit low um, on the defense, and I'm able to go ahead and pop him right over the middle. 
no huddle, go into an inside zone play right here and uh, get some pretty good blocking, but his defensive back, a defender actually comes down and blocks up the run. This guy actually had really good user stick against the run. So right here, I go ahead, he's running, I think he was running a lot of cover three shells. So I got a deep comeback route on the backside with a, with a, with a, with a vertical route, and it's wide open. But I threw the ball early and completely missed it. So I was so excited about this. Now, here's something you should never do when you're playing a game. If you have not lapped a play and you do not have your reads down, don't jump into plays just because you, you kind of understand the route concept, the concepts. Right here, um, I actually didn't have my reads down correctly and actually gets a nice little block shed and able to go ahead and tackle me. But the reason I got I didn't I, I got tackled right there is because I didn't have a fast read. So fourth and nineteen, I kicked uh, I pumped the ball back off to him. Uh, so a minute and seven seconds left. He's going with a single, with uh, basically uh, empty backfield. So I've got pressure coming off, but he actually is getting rid of the ball really quick with a little crossing right there. So he goes once again back to it. I'm going to go ahead and keep with the pressure. And this time I've got a defensive uh, defender right there in the middle, but he actually just hits me with that little drag route, and he's just dinking and dunking me down in the middle. And you know, it's it's kind of like the way he was running his def his his offense. Um, it, it was it was type of situation where I had to pick my poison, whether I wanted to come down to the to the crossing route or he had a, he had a crossing route on the back inside. So this guy ran a lot of crossing routes as I was editing this play, and these are things that you don't see when you're playing the game because you're concentrating on setting up your defense correctly and doing certain things. So right here, pressure comes in. I actually had a I think. I hit a hook zone over there back there with, with Amos, and I get a nice little interception with 24 seconds left on the clock. So right here I'm thinking, okay, all I need to do is just get the ball into field goal range, take my three points, and go into the second half off by a score. So right here, um, I drop drop it down to Cohen. I got to burn a timeout in this type of situation. I, I thought about running the clock down, but it was, it was it was just stupid. So now I jump into a different type of formation. This is kind of a levels formation. I take Gabriel, streak him up. My goal was to try to open up Burton and Howard on the on the corner route, but I, I decided to read the streak. And as you can see, he was using the guy over the middle, leaving Gabriel wide open. So I just racked that puppy and take it into the red zone up seven uh, uh, up another seven points so 12 seconds left there's like you know this is garbage time all I should do is just get one stop catch him in bounds and this game's pretty much over he goes into this play right here and beats my corner on the backhand side and actually almost he almost breaks a tackle with Randall Cobb he gets the ball down to the 28 yard line with three seconds left takes a quick timeout and goes uh, gets a three uh, three uh, a field goal right there to, uh, to to get the ball within four points. So back in the second half, um, <clears throat> things are getting a little bit um, a little bit crazier right here because he's 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 just running this no huddle, and I'm actually trying to get some pressure off the edge. I'm having a hard time getting that 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 pinch blitz set up out of the 34 odd. And that's one of the reasons why I switched over Matt Patricia's uh, defense because I just like this. Um, 43 defensive look. I like getting those guys down in the box. It's really good against the run because guys are in the, down in the box. And I actually have got those hook zones. It kind of messes up people who read a little bit. And then I can also get some fast pressure in it. So why I actually jumped into this formation um, in in an in a empty back set field, it might, have been, it might have been a base set, and that's probably why I jumped into it. So no huddles me again. I go ahead and put a bunch of zones up here. And I'm thinking he might be taking off with his running back, uh, with his uh, his uh, quarterback, because he's doing it right, uh, doing it again. So I put my uh, my defenders in yellow zones with my linebackers right there, and that kind of messed up his reads a little bit. So fourth and two situation, I decided to go and hit him with a man blitz. Uh, I shifted my linebackers off. I don't know why he did that, uh, but uh, he actually does head and hits a crosser on the back inside. So you know, this guy was pretty lights out with making his reads. Like he was he was really good at making his reads. He was good in an empty back formation right here. A spy up my my uh, defensive end. He doesn't make a play right there. He doesn't doesn't react uh, to uh, his quarterback quarterback but um, going ahead and zoning up all my guys I, I put two spies out now if you take a look in the middle of the play that actually was supposed to be a spy he drops into a hook zone completely pulling out of the area and right there Rogers just comes right into the red zone so uh, into the end zone I thought he was spied up so you can see he actually fell on a hook and that's the one thing that really frustrates with me with this game is just that there's no consistency with the zones that these defenders fall into based on the formations you go into it is it, like they, they constantly switch that's the one thing I the only beef I have with EA is that if they would just go ahead and leave the zones as is for each defensive assignment even if it's more simple that's fine I have no problem with it but it's constantly changing depending on the formations you're in so hit a little flat uh, a little flat route right there 
and get the ball down. I'm going back into a, a, a play action crossing route type formation, and here I'm going to go ahead and, and drop it down to uh, the guy. He actually rushes in. I think he tries a manual rush because right now there's a meta going on that, that uh, pro players have figured out how to rush manually into the uh, into the backfield and have I actually have it happen to me before so I know it's a, it's something that's going on in the game and and you know the good players know how to do it correctly so right there I actually do a nice little uh, eight uh, eight yard run right up the middle uh, come back to uh, one of my favorite plays he actually reads it correctly I'm, I take a ball pa- pass over the middle and miss my miss my throw his wide, that wide receiver was completely underneath the coverage if I would have thrown that correctly would have been at so uh, go into a play don't normally run um, and I see the hitch right here look at this lucky play right there the defender was right there to make a play normally these guys Superman and intercept that type of stuff but it just didn't happen on a play so I got away with one right there uh, because the read initially was that that defender actually came off and was playing the seam and I was able to go and hit that. So back into um, this is uh, one of my favorite plays. It's uh, it's it's got that flat con- a concept right there, and I get hit as I'm throwing the ball. So I'm going to come back to this play once again. I'm looking off to the left. Uh, I've got the the flat route by the running back, and I'm also got that crossing route over the middle. And um, I the the. The defender actually comes down to the running back, so I look over the middle and actually threw right into his defender. That was a terrible read by me, terrible throw. I should have waited just a split second more to be able to get it to the running uh, to the running back. Just a bad decision by me. So. Back into the 43, under, I believe. I go ahead and, and put my guys in hook zones. I have to go ahead and take care of that crossing right over the middle. He's running around with his quarterback. He was so patient, but this is a bad throw right here. He actually throws into defenders right there. That could have been picked off. It should have been picked off in that type of situation. So right here, I'm going back into the into the G uh, formation. I think I spread out my defensive line. I'm supposed to keep those guys in place and actually uh, put them up. So the, uh, the blitz actually gets picked up. Look to the crossing route. Look at a good read like that. I pulled, I peeled off that route, and he stayed with that route and still got rid of the ball. And that's one of the advantages of having um, Aaron Rodgers is he's actually going to drop that ball in there. So right here I've got some edge pressure. He has to get rid of the ball right here, and Amos comes down and actually tackles him. Second and two situation. I smartly take a timeout. I don't want to give this guy any kind of an opportunity. I go into, uh, I believe, a, a 34 uh, free safety blitz off the edge. I'm doing some. I'm trying to do some underneath coverage. I've got the three, the three the player hook switch off, and right here uh, pressure comes off the edge. It gets rid of the ball. So I'm in the driver's seat. Three minutes and 43 seconds left. I need to chew the clock down, get the ball in the red zone. I'm already in field goal range, so the game is already tied, basically. So taking four yard gainer right there, uh, going back uh, to the inside zone. I don't think I hit this hit, hit this run against him at all, and actually get some pretty good block uh, good blocking right there, and actually pinball all the way up to a third and inches situation. So once again, I think I go back into uh, the dive play. It's third and inches. I should be able to get this uh, this particular play, uh, just running the ball right right up his gut. And right here, he makes a phenomenal user with his linebacker to go and stuff me right there. So fourth and inches, go into uh, the uh, <clears throat> go into the uh, the the the, the I form formation. I've got a duel off to the edge, and right here I've got the hole. But he actually gets a phenomenal block shot off my fullback, which is actually running back that doesn't hold his blocks. And right there. He gets the ball back with two minutes left. This game is pretty much toast right here. I go ahead and do a man a aggressive man blitz. He makes a good juke move and actually takes the ball down to the 50 yard line, 30, 40, uh, 30, 42 yard line right there. And this game's pretty much toast. I actually go ahead and take a timeout. So now I'm actually I'm just trying to go ahead and stop this guy's run. I do um, <clears throat> a, a, a play where I'm actually doing corner blitz and I actually sack him down on the 49 yard line. So he loses nine yards on that. He no huddles. I take my take my last time out, and once again he goes back to the same play again, and I actually tackle him down to the 40 yard line. So third and 27. Look at the clock right now. He's got basically a ton of time on the clock, and actually throws the ball. I almost pick it off right there. So fourth and 27. This is the biggest boneheaded play of the game. What was he thinking? What? Why are you going for it right now? Just pump the ball off. Make me earn my my keep. And he actually does a wildcat run with. What? What are you thinking? What were you thinking? You had this game wrapped up. You had it wrapped up. So I go into uh, a little corner panel on the backhand side. 
minute and, and uh, two seconds left. Actually, go back to the play I got I got the previous touchdown with, and actually follows that that streak route. I'm able to go and hit him right over the middle with Miller and get the ball down to the one yard line. He starts burning his timeouts, so I'm thinking, okay, so I need to run the ball a couple times, forces some timeouts. He actually has an, once again another nice tackle, burns another timeout. 49 seconds left. I got I've got a couple downs to get the ball in there, into the end zone. And I'm going to go ahead and settle, take the ball in the end zone with a little pitch play that's actually got me two touchdowns so far. So, 45 seconds left. He goes back to his empty set. Right here, I'm actually doing some kind of a dollar blitz with the, with the DBs doing the edge pressure, but I did not slide them in because he was actually doing a lot of quick hiking against me. So uh, he wasn't taking a lot of time setting things up. This guy actually did have a really good spin move down where he was actually making some plays on the field. So clock is down to 30, 30 seconds. He's only got one timeout. He has to get the ball into the red zone. And right here, he actually has a phenomenal play. Once again, another spin move to go and juke my guys out. Down to the 40-yard line, he burns his timeout. This is really pretty much the key of the game right here. So I go back to, um, I, I'm going back to um, a bunch of guys in the inside, inside of the middle of the field, give them the sidelines right here, and actually passes the ball. It was a bad throw, and Amos is able to come down with it, and that's the end of the game. So guys, once again, thanks for watching my gameplay. I really appreciate it. This is probably the biggest boneheaded play uh, gameplay by this guy. This guy had this game wrapped up, and he just made just stupid decisions at the end of the game. So you, you've always got to go ahead. You're playing for the win, man. Play for the win. So to my subscribers, thank you for support, and until next time.